Professor Yerby trying to cause an effect. Enjoy. And this week we're looking at email in forensics. And so this video I'm going to kind of wander around from a couple of the different uh, clients that you may encounter uh, while you're doing email investigation. So let's first start with our most popular thing that you'll probably encounter, Outlook. So Outlook is an email client it's made by Microsoft and it'll probably be the most popular type of email investigation you're doing followed closely by webmail. But uh, the thing to keep in mind that you need to know about how Outlook stores data files, there are two main types of uh, files that they use. Um, so I think I'm using uh, the 2010 version of Outlook in this in this uh, scenario here. Uh, but you can go into your account settings and there are two different ways that files are typically stored. You can see it's either a Microsoft Exchange file and those will be OST files at, right here. Uh, but what you'll see even more commonly which um, I guess I actually don't have here. So I have a calendar file. Uh, let me see if I can connect to another computer. Uh, but what you'll see mo more commonly are PST files. And PST files can really grow really large uh, and they can contain lots of information. When you delete a file from an OST, or I mean from a PST file, uh, it'll then go to your deleted items. So I'm going to have most of this blurred out. But let's let me grab something that is okay for you to see here. Um, let's see. Okay, so on my screen, I have an email from Amazon.com. If I want, I can highlight this. I can click delete. So I deleted that file. Where it goes when I delete it is it goes to my deleted items. Then after that, let's find that file. So it's in my deleted items. Now when I hit delete again, it'll say, do you want to permanently delete the selected item? So it's gone. So now if I wanted to find that file, what would I do? At this point, I would have to utilize some forensics techniques and some forensic software. Well, it looks like it's gone, right? It looks like it's probably purged from my OST or PST file. If this was in my PST file, let's let me see if I have some here. So I have two different accounts here, uh, but really what I want to see. So I have my different uh, PST files. So I have a an archive PST and then I have a personal folders. Uh, but what I wanted to make the point is, once you delete an email, it goes to your deleted items. Once it's in your deleted items, and you delete it from there, it says you want to permanently delete it. It doesn't move it to to somewhere where you can recover it just using uh, your uh, your your GUI browser or uh, file explorer it's not my recycle bin it's nowhere but that file does still exist and so that's where the forensics technique comes in uh, until you go through and you compress your folder you compress your PST file which doesn't happen very often because Usually a PST file is allowed to grow and grow and grow. Uh, when you're dealing with your OST, this is your exchange file, usually the email administrator has some sort of uh, restrictions on size uh, as far as how large the file can go. So these may grow, and I'll talk about the, the difference of where you can find those files in a second as well. But your PST file usually doesn't get compressed, usually doesn't get sh shrunken down. So even though it looks like the email is completely gone, uh, they can certainly be recovered from PST files because they're still in that file. You would need some forensic software to go into that PST file and examine it, but it's absolutely recoverable. Uh, with your OST file, this is your exchange. Again, when you delete things, it goes to your deleted items and then you can delete it out of there and it says it's permanently gone. On that one, uh, same sort of thing, but you have an extra place to look. Uh, the, the email server, the exchange server that's hosting your email, will very likely have a copy of that message that 
that uh, depending on the organization, depending on the email administrator, they may have a backup copy of of all of the emails that have been sent and received uh, on that email server, depending on what kind of compliance they're trying to uh, comply with. All right, so so that's that's dealing with Outlook, uh, which is you know, special special client. Uh, then we have other email clients like uh, Thunderbird, uh, Eudora, the MacMail, and these are text-based emails. So you can take these these types of files and you can actually search plain text. If you tried to search uh, text in a PST file, so so you loaded a PST file into um, uh, Pro Discover and you wanted to do a text search, it wouldn't really come up with any results because the the text is encrypted and it's all scrambled up within that PST file. You need a reader that's equipped to handle PST files. But with things like Thunderbird, Eudora, MacMail, these they store your emails in plain text. There's nothing wrong with that as far as a security standpoint on your own personal machine. Uh, it's just a different way that they handle your emails. But the, the thing to keep in mind is it's different how you would search uh, for email evidence when you're doing a forensic search. Other things like uh, webmail. This is where uh, the the email isn't stored on your machine because we're not actually downloading it to view it. We're it's more of we're viewing an internet page with this message on it. So the investigation is more of a web search email. You can get in there once you get into the account but it's a webmail account uh, so there's a different set of forensics that goes with this and right now I'm in my spam folder uh, it looks like I've got 99 spams but getting rich ain't one <laughs> I plan that anyways uh, but there are a lot of different other things that you can do in here uh, so I've got this highlighted and this is just a Yahoo account I can go here and do look at my full header information and this will tell me the IP that it's originating from, I could use this to verify the authenticity to see if this email account, so this thing says it's from jahali.com and let's see, so we have some other information and it came to my email account, my, my Yahoo account, and the email address it's trying to say it's from is here but there's a lot of specialized software out there free and paid software uh, that can take this information you can just copy and paste it into and it can give you some pretty neat information about uh, the location of where the the email originated from the server the the ISP uh, when it was sent a lot of a lot of cool stuff out there that you can do with just getting this very simple to to get information um, this is where you can see if someone was maybe spoofing a, a, a email address or something so it looks like it's coming from something legit and in the chapter they talk about phishing and and things of that nature and then the the last thing I want to talk about with messaging is doing something like Facebook again it's kind of works the same way as um, the same way as your webmail where you're not actually downloading a message so it's not going to work the same way that you would work over here uh, in Outlook with your PST OST file or in your text based email like Thunderbird, Eudora, MacMail, uh, Outlook Express that's another really common one there so that's that's a a quick introduction to several different uh, email forensics uh, topics. Email forensics is extremely vast, extremely popular. Uh, that you could certainly go to a full week course on just email forensics and doing investigations on email. But just kind of wanted to give you a quick introduction and kind of scratch the surface on email forensics. So thank you for your time and have a great day.